So Lewis, let's talk a little bit about how Kingston um, measures endurance yeah. uh, for, for a particular SSD. At Kingston here, we, we use a uh, calculation called uh, TBW, or Total Bytes Written yeah. uh, to the Drive. And um, let's talk a little bit about how we arrive at that value Sure. and um, what, you know, what that means to, to the user. Okay, well, I think with TBW, the, the biggest thing is that it's it's not it's it's very variable, right? It's very dynamic, and and I know um, a lot of our competitors and and us included, we will post a TBW number, right? On there saying that you know based on this workload, you should be able to write that, but it is really a kind of your mileage may vary spec, right? You know, it really is a function of total gigabytes on the drive, right? Total program erase cycles, are we using 3K NAND, 5K NAND, 30K NAND on our, on our E100? And then WAF, which is really the wild card, right? Now, like I said, we talked about this earlier, the WAF of someone just using it, at, using their SSD for home use, you know, uh, iTunes, web browsing, email, you know, it could be much different than the WAF from the digital content guy, right? The guy that's in Photoshop all the time, right? The, the guy that's doing things with Premiere or videos, you know, all, all of that is, is gonna be a, a a variable within there and, and it's going to affect WAF which is going to affect TBW so I would say the one thing that I would caution most people is that if you're looking at the marketing spec right if you're looking at that data sheet that's a number that's gonna you know at some point the person who created that TBW number had to choose a WAF right at a given point now your WAF might be better and your WAF might be much much worse you know the numbers that we choose are actually pretty conservative right for our desktop workloads we use a WAF of four which I think actually is, is very very conservative Okay. Okay. So great. So so what you're saying essentially is that you know your typical client workload is, is pretty predictable. Yeah. It's compressible. Right. Um, uh, we we pretty much know where we fall uh, in regards to our write amplification factor. But again, kind of going back to those purpose-built systems, it's it's kind of difficult to gauge as to what their WAF's going to be based on compressibility, right. how random the data is, yeah. and so forth. So. Um, so TBW is, is again kind of a, a rough estimate, yep. um, or, or kind of best guess. Yeah. Uh, but individual user application and data right. is really going to determine, you know, what the TBW life of that drive is. Definitely, and that's where smart kicks in, right? We talked about that earlier, right? What we give you, we give our users, is the ability to monitor that. And right, once you understand what your WAF is, then you can really calculate your own TBW at that, right? And so I know, you know, we, we've got resources on our website that talk about that. You know, we've we've shared that with customers, you know, in person. Um, you know, once you understand WAF, TBW at that point becomes more real. Um, you know, anything else is just like you said, almost a best guess, right? We're making an assumption. And right. so most of what I see, um, and like I said, if you want to call it a marketing spec, that, that's fine. Most people are, are probably ultra um, aggressive when it comes to their TBW numbers. And I'm not sure that that's really real life. I would say in our case, we, we tend to play things a little more conservatively. And so, yeah, I would expect most people uh, that are using our drives in the desktop or, or, or you know, a, a, any kind of just sort of client usage, they're their TBW is going to be exceed what we what we post easily. Yeah, great, great. Sure.